And welcome back, everyone, to Who Would Win the Week? Who Would Win? This one comes to us from Daniel F., who asked the question, who would win a fight? Blue Beetle, Jamie Reyes, versus the Guyver suit mark, basically the Model 1 Guyver suit. At least that was how it was written down. Yeah, Guyver 1. That was the one that was written down. There actually is also a Guyver 0. Um, it was an unnamed, the holder, uh, unit holder was a, uh, unnamed crow Magnum man, <laughs> but, uh, no, with the holder of the Guyver one was Sho Fukamachi, I believe is the name of the character. Uh, so the, let's, let's look at this because at first, no lie, I thought this was kind of going to be a stomp in Blue Beetle's favor. Uh, it's not that I'm not familiar with Guyver to whatever degree. It's just that Guyver doesn't come up very often on the channel. So my knowledge about Guyver was a little lacking at points. That said, so I refreshed myself on what the Guyver suit is capable of doing. And I gotta say, it's a lot closer of a match than you might think. The Guyver suit, essentially, uh, the human race in the Guyver universe was actually developed originally as a weapon. No joke, the human race was developed as a weapon to fight a race of beings um, known as the create, uh, fight in the Creator Wars. The, uni the unit itself uh, gives superhuman strength, speed, incredible durability, basically all the physical enhancements you might think uh, would come from it. Um, biological enhancements, pretty much up the yin-yang, uh, including things like physical enhancements, including replacing your organs, provide greater blood flow, your heart and lungs for greater blood flow, uh, through the host bones, they're not, uh, and muscles aren't in place, they are, uh, the, they are bio-boosted by this merger, increasing their cellular growth to the peak, meaning muscle and bone density are increased to the peak levels, which is why host condition doesn't matter when you attach it. In essence, one of the things the Guyver suit does is amp you to your physical best as a human. Whatever the whatever your peak level of ability could be, that is exactly what it, it that is exactly what it does. Um, the the gyro system organs uh, that channel gravitational energy from uh, from the gravity control orb through the body can be used to instantly boost momentum by a factor of ten. Basically, a super a quick boost ten times over, allowing the user gyro punch to hit far harder than normal speeds and mass would normally allow. This compensates for the fact that Guyver has neither 10 times, 100% the mass nor 100% the speed of the host, or 100%, uh, 100 times. Uh, both of which normally needed to give 100 times the power of a kick. Basically, you're able to amp yourself 100 times, is what they're saying, kind of. It's also an effective method of directly channeling energy into a physical attack. Uh, they have a Guyver suit where, by the way, the Guyver is essentially a bio, a techno organic suit that attaches to you and is uh, is part of you at that point. The organism that composes the majority of the bio-boosted armor is capable of repairing or growing any part of itself or hosts at an accelerated rate. So the extreme, so extreme is this ability that is able to completely regenerate Guyver 1 from only a few cells attached to the control metal, even when only a part of the host survived. They can still regenerate into a fully independent organism, sometimes in the span of minutes. That means that as long as there's some cells there, as long as a little bit of, as long as some DNA is there, you can be, you can survive just about anything. So long as this, uh, what was it again? The control metal, uh, would it completely regenerate, uh, regenerate Garwin from the so extreme the ability was able to come basically, um, you know, what's it called again? The, uh, the control thing, heat, head beam, uh, high frequency, solar gravitation control. What's the name of the damn thing? Uh, control metal, the control metal, which essentially is you, it literally backs up all your genetics, all your consciousness, pretty much, and you can regenerate you back. It is nuts. Uh, one of the things, though, that when I read it, I realized, okay, this is nowhere near as clear cut as I thought it was, was the vibration globes. They're the round thing orbs that the Guyver's mouth can produce highly, uh, sorry, two orbs at the, the Guyver's mouth. If you look at them, you'll see, I'll enlarge the picture as best I can here. Uh, oh, actually, that's pretty good. Uh, so you'll see these two orbs on the side of his face here. Basically, at full power, the sound waves produced by the we this weapon do not merely batter or shake objects, but in fact hone in on the molecular frequency, causing it to literally disintegrate in a cloud of dispersed particles. Sonic Buster also be seen able to focus in on a particular object and destroy them with a devastating immediate sur and without devastating the immediate surroundings. Uh, so in essence, that that ability 
literally can literally is something that can theoretically theoretically mind you bypassed bypassed bypass indestructible things because hypothetically everything has a frequency in which you know they would eventually break down even in the indestructible thing so theoretically something that is unable to absorb like sound waves like vibranium versus adamantium adamantium actually could be on the chopping block with this so it's an extremely devastating type of ability there's also the mega uh, mega smasher or thoracic particle beam cannon uh, the Smasher are chest armor P uh, particle beam cannons, which fire high energy of particle beams that, uh, that is officially stated as being able to deliver more than 100 megawatt output. The lens is fragile, but usually covered by a chest piece. It's considered gu the Giver cannon and is the most powerful particle beam weapon existing on Earth, at least his world. It says it's tremendous, tremendous destructive capabilities going gouging through Mount Minakami in an instant. Um... So that's impressive. The head beam, which he is literally just firing a beam from his head, is still in, uh, he's concentrated to a single point, expel expel, uh, ex, expel through a laser generator. Um, again, it's very powerful. Um, high frequency swords, as essence similar to Guyver's weapons seem to be very particle and sound based, surprisingly, or vibration. Well, the vibrations and sounds. Um, the, basically they are vibrating swords that come out of his, uh, you'll see the sp um, spikes on his elbows there. Swords come out of there. They vibrate at a frequency capable of cutting through most things. Uh, gravity control, where basically he, he uh, siphons gravitational energy from a higher dimension. Two main uses include giving the, him the ability to fly and unleash destructive gravity of waves that are compressed into a circular shape and fire to form a gravity launcher. In essence, he's kind of creating a very small less powerful version of a black hole uh pressure cannon powerful gravity attack that concentrates high level of gravity within a single point between the palms the gravity hands the gravity is manipulated to form a compressed virtual black hole as i just said his head sensors allow him to sense the electromagnetic field around him the control metal is essentially the orb on in the center of his head if that is destroyed then yeah it's pretty he is at sol like he's pretty much destroyed there and then guyver's bio organs during the joining with guyver the host's body is changed permanently uh, the guy leaves two growths on the back of the host that act as form as transceivers to the guy who while also being able to sense the guy host nearby that's neither here nor there the point being is the guy is a is a very i think underappreciated powerful bio suit like this is a suit that can get would give a lot of actual like more prominent comic characters Hell, manga, anime carries a lot more run for their money than probably uh, people might give credit for. And this is why I think he gets compared to, the, compared to the Blue Beetle Scare, because the Blue Beetle Scare pretty much does the exact same thing. It's a sentient... It's te, it's not organic, per se, it's, but it's, I guess it's a techno-organic being. I, I've i never actually quite understood the Scarab um, lore. I think it is mostly tech, but there is organic components to it. In essence, though, what it does is it merges with a host, painfully maybe, uh, and you gain the Blue Beetle suit. Now, the suit can act independently. The Scarab can act independently from the host, but generally speaking, they are generally in, in sync. And Jamie Reyes is one of the most prominent users of the Scarab. The Scarab, in essence, can kind of do just about anything you put your mind to. It is... An automated defense system, meaning it can create countermeasures based off of progression. It's capable of producing energy fields so powerful that the Flash can't phase through them. It can actually create freaking nukes, for God's sake. It's capable of creating energy blasts, energy swords, blades, shields, you name it, energy, it can pretty much do it. Uh, it's capable of hacking. It's literally hacked an entire reach, which was, I believe, the individuals who created the Scarabs. Uh, but it hacked their ship. An alien ship and hacked it. I uh, also hacked into a bank just because it could. Uh, he's durable enough to survive to, uh, to hit, uh, survive shots from a guy gardener, an enraged guy gardener, when he was just a noob. Guy gardener being a Green Lantern is hitting probably very powerful, <laughs> sitting with very powerful shots. Um, he's also survived massive onslaughts from other characters like Lobo, got away fine. He can go toe to toe with characters on much higher. Seriously powerful um, uh, levels of power. I mean, you could probably take shots from Superman and still walk away. You wouldn't be able to beat Superman, which, to be, let me rephrase that. Physically, he can't beat Superman, but the Scarab can actually create 
like different forms of like, you know, radiation, light, energy, depending on what it has available and what's going up against. Because it actually did at one point create kryptonite, green kryptonite to weaken Supergirl in a fight. So Blue Beetle actually theoretically is capable of putting down Superman if you really wanted to. Um, so not only that, but it, again, it's as we kind of see a little bit in the movie, it, whatever he can kind of imagine, his, the suit can create. So it's all up to his you know memories, abilities. Plus, he's also well versed in like son sonic weapons are among one of the main things he creates, which is another reason why he's probably compared. Now, that being said, the uh, the Scarab does have a lot of, like, you know, experience under its belt, but the Giver, whoever's wearing the Giver suit usually is a much better combatant than Jamie. Jamie's, Jamie has gotten better as the years have gone on, but he's certainly not, um, uh, certainly not, true, like, you know, a, a insane hand-to-hand fighter. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of, like, some of the speed fees, he's fast enough to appear in several places at once at the same time, fast enough to move to block energy attacks before they're fired, sorry, after they're fired, um, dodge the blast from bombshell, the scarab can travel faster than light, and catch, he catched up with a dude falling, uh, strength-wise, he's capable of, like, one-arming a truck, holding apart Gigantus fist, carrying a car with no problems, and punching Black Beetle into the ground. Uh, just to go again with the uh, durability and endurance, he survived a fall from orbit with no little unharmed, knocked out a reach soldier, soldier while so severely injured and depowered, completely bulletproof, gets slammed through the ground, thrown into a car, he's telepathically resistant, uh, survives pain for hours of torture in a second and a half, survives an attack from a bloodlusted guy gardener, uh, gets smashed in the ground by Lobo and is okay, and takes some hits from a scarab warrior with a Sinestro ring. Oh, should also note the... Um, what was the Starro feat with the five that I read with the five, uh, five uh, Sinestro ring, uh, yellow lantern rings? Hold on. Oh, that's right. Matches and repels Starro, who is amped by five different Sinestro yellow lantern core rings. So while I say this fight is closer than you might than I thought initially, I would even say. Guyver actually has a perfect weapon to kill the Scarab and Jamie Reyes with the... What was the name of it again? Uh, with the... Uh, what the... By the With the vibration gloves. If he can hit him into whatever the frequency is of the Scarab, he could destroy the Scarab. That said, Jamie Reyes is a... The Blue Beetle is a beast. Like a straight-on beast in a fight. He's already faster because he can move, the Scarab can move at light speeds, and he can move so fast that there's multiple images of him. He's durable enough to survive shots from Superman, Guy Gardner, and freaking Sinestro Corps, uh, like Yellow Lanterns. So he's already got durability, again, on a higher level than Guyver. He can create nukes, which is a level of power. Guyver actually does kind of have that to a certain degree. But he can create nukes on the fly if he really wanted to. Um, not to mention that the, but the Scarab can also, is a thinking, working computer, is capable of, or computer, a thinking organism, and it's capable of an analyzing and creating countermeasures in an instant. Guyver is still, is still, while well, he's maybe enhanced, is still thinking on his own, while Jamie and the Scarab are two separate entities working together. Now, I think Guyver does have some edges on Jamie, though. He's always got his consistent weaponry on call, whereas... The Scarab might be trying to adapt and maybe isn't going to adapt uh, effectively enough. For example, those um, uh, those high-frequency swords, I don't know the Scarab has an effective tool against that apart from an energy shield. So he might try to, say, block, and then Guyver just comes slices, slices Reyes. Reyes blasts him back. They're going to... So he's finding gravity with uh, basically little black holes. Uh, Scarab is like, can't necessarily compensate immediately for it. Uh, Guy, Guyver would then uh, go most likely for the kill shot with a high frequency um, with the vibration gloves. The problem, though, for Guyver here is that he doesn't have an immediate adaptability. He's, can, he's got immense durability, strength, Plenty of great tech. I'd love to do a what-if involving the Guyver suit at some point. Be it Naruto, whoever has the Guyver suit. I don't know. I, but still. Uh, that said, the, because it, because the alien tech of the Scarab is a lot more advanced, 
uh, and is able to produce countermeasures based on progression, it could it would very likely be able to analyze that those globes and figure out a countermeasure and most likely just combat the frequency with another frequency. And at that point now, it's just a matter of how much damage can Blue Beetle dish out and can he dish out enough to put Gyro down permanently? And I think the answer is when you're incapable of creating nukes, very much so, yes. He, he would be the, uh, the more powerful in terms of power output. I I think Giver would actually put a pretty up a pretty solid fight before it got serious enough for that to happen. But I think Blue Beetle would take it. But like I said, this is a lot closer to a match than I initially gave it credit for. Uh, Giver's a pretty... I forgot how cool Giver really... And it's a cool-looking suit. Like, I mean, I, l l look at that. That's a boss-looking... That's a boss-designed. Boss it's very. I mean, it's very Japanese-inspired, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's a very boss design. So, that's my thoughts. What do you think? I would go Blue Beetle, but that doesn't detract from Giver. Giver's pretty awesome. So, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.